I asked the internet to roast my solar tractor design in one part, got the most heat by far. Apparently using a flange bearing for the central pivot point wasn't the way to go, and that's putting it nicely. But honestly, you're right, it had issues. Now since you complained about it, you are gonna help me fix it. Today I'll go through three possible solutions and one X factor, then I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison showing what each one costs in terms of time, money, and sanity. And after that, I'll let you know how you can cast your vote so you can decide which one I build next. You probably clicked on this video because you like building things and solving problems. Well, that just got you volunteered for the engineering team. Congratulations. But we're not here just for fun. We're trying to tackle the issues that keep most people from going solar, like tight budgets, small spaces, the need for portability if someone's moving out or if a storm's moving in. And all of that hinges on this part right here, literally. This is the crux of the tracker's movement. It has to handle the motion of the panel, the, the wind loads, uh, and do all of that while not breaking people's budgets. Let's get started with the issues people had with the current design. Flange bearings like this are great if you're spinning a rod in one direction, but when you push sideways like this, they pop right out. I even tried bracing it with a larger bearing from behind, but couldn't stabilize it. Now let's check out the replacement options. Option A, the overbearing block. This model uses pillow block bearings to secure the shaft in two places. It fits nicely with the spacing on the aluminum framing, and I can add another framing support from below if needed. It seems pretty solid, but do I really need to put an anvil on this thing to get it to work? Option B, the bracket buster. These bearing mounts have a low profile that are a bit less imposing. The holes don't quite line up, but with enough creative use of T-slot, aluminum framing, and some spacers, and maybe some questionable life choices, I made it work. An engineering friend of mine says I have an unhealthy addiction to T-slot framing, but I looked into aluminum spacers and they're really not cheaper than T-slot framing unless you have a bucket of 10,000 of them lying around, which I don't. I mean, these T-slot pieces are 22 cents each, but if you have a go-to source for aluminum spacers, let me know in the comments. But another reason to go with T-slot framing is that it fits really well with, that's right, T-slot framing. Option C, der Überflanche. A flange fix and support seems like a really good option. It's everything I was hoping the flange bearing would be, and it's totally built to handle off-axis forces. But this one part could cost more than the rest of the build combined, and I only have so many kidneys to sell. A benefit of all of these options is that I can take the magnetic rotary encoder that determines the orientation of the panel right on the surface of the aluminum framing. So no big hole to drill or 3D printed cradle to hold the encoder. And I can use the same method to waterproof both of my encoders instead of wrapping one with heat shrink and the other with liquid electric tape. So it's nice to simplify things and drop the extra steps. Now for the side-by-side -side comparison of options A, B, and C. The overbearing block had the fewest parts and drilled holes and will cost about $50. The bracket buster was the most complicated by far with the most parts. It also sat higher than the other two, but was the cheapest being about $30. Der Überflanche was the most compact design, but also the most expensive. I found one for around $70, but it wasn't even stainless steel, so I'm pretty worried this could wind up being hundreds of dollars. Now for the X factor, and that X factor is you. If you have a better idea, let me know. Uh, maybe I'll wind up incorporating it in the final design. Some people on Reddit suggested using journal bearings or bracing the outer race, but these didn't really seem as rugged to me as the options that I showed you. Uh, but if you disagree, I'd love to hear it. Now for your voting instructions. I pinned each of the options at the top of the comment section. Just upvote the one that you like best. And if you want to see the results and whether it actually works, um, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you'll see the follow-up video on the results. Mistakes were made, and I'm sure more are coming. But you never find out until you go. You just have to walk out as far as you can see and troubleshoot when you get there. Sometimes that means you'll have to start over and that's fine. But if you wait until you have it all figured out, you'll probably never get started. And you should never expect to be ready before you go. Maybe there's an idea or a dream you have on your mind. Maybe it's time you got started. Thanks for your help. See you next time.